We're going inside right now. Granted, we just had the floor up to max. Night. It was. We saw it actually over almost 100 degrees. What this thing was reading close to the uh, heat register. We've had this sitting for about an hour now. About an hour. Uh, with the AC cranking, oh, I had it completely not plugged in. It's completely not plugged <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah, and we had the batteries are like eight, 98 percent when I started. We have not gone into this van. Gonna have to see what where we're at in in the last hour. So let's find out what we're doing here. What's up guys? So if you guys are new to my channel, consider subscribing. What today's video is about, part three of, I guess, the cruise and comfort air conditioning unit. It's a 12 volt air conditioning unit. We're gonna get into some details. We're gonna get into how I like it. We're gonna get into some, just all that good stuff. I've been testing it out the last couple days. As you guys saw in the beginning of this video, we're gonna get more into that. What I do here is I live in, well, actually, no. I've been saying this for so long that I live in this van called Ghost. Well, well, guess what? I have temporarily moved out of this van. I am now staying with a friend of mine. I've put this van up for sale. And I'm going to now start working on uh, design and development of a container home, a tiny home. Once this van sells, I do plan on building a third van, but I'm going to be doing the container home first. Whatever. All of that will be coming up. What I also do on this channel is I love to do tours of other people's vans. I do it my style. The entire channel is vlog based. Do it vlog style. I hold the camera. I'm the one talking. I have discussions with people. I also do informational vlogs. I try to have guests on for those. Anybody that actually is really, uh, that really knows a lot about whatever the topic we're talking about, or I will be doing it myself. Anyways, what today's video is about the cruise and comfort like I talked about. I could have uh, somebody like Mark on this video uh, or Troy from Van Life Tech. If I was near Chris from Cruise and Comfort, the CEO, uh, I would have him on this video. However, he is in Arizona where he runs the business and I am all the way up in Portland. I do plan and hope to go and see Chris at some point. During some point in my channel's history, I will go and visit Cruise and Comfort. I will go see their operation. If you haven't looked at part one and part two of the Cruise and Comfort pretty much install. Again, it's my style, it's the vlog style. It's a little different, it's not like a, this is how you do it, but we kind of go over some certain things. Part one was the condenser that was mounted underneath the van in the spare tire location. Uh, we talked about a bunch of different things, how to do it, where to make, how to make the brackets for it, different ideas for it. I hired Nomadic Customs for that. They made aluminum brackets for me and we kind of talked about, you know, the, the fans being underneath the van really. Part two was me putting the uh, air conditioning unit inside the van, which is back underneath my Murphy bed, which is right here. And how I had to run the duct work uh, inside of this wall cavity here and then come out here. We also did a little bit of the electrical. I didn't really touch on the electrical because I didn't touch it. I just watched Miles from Light Harvest Solar and Mark from Nomadic Customs kind of go over some things. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it was. And what's the beautiful thing about all of this is Cruise and Comfort actually sends all of that information to you in a manual. I believe it's through email. Mine was through an email. It's a PDF and literally you can just look at it right there. It's super easy. <laughs> I say that, but I struggled with it for a little bit. I've been getting so many questions about just so many different things. And I guess that's actually a good segue. If you guys want to get in touch with me, I do have a lot of emails to catch up on too. So I'm really sorry, but I do get a lot of just random questions sometimes. You can find me at jaredtachi.com. There's a contact page on there. And obviously my van up for sale on there and I've got merch even. Before I get into the Cruise and Comfort machine, I've been getting some questions on like, why did I go with the Cruise and Comfort over like a roof mount AC or why can't you put in like 120 volt AC? Blah, 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 blah. I went with the Cruise and Comfort for a couple different reasons. Number one, uh, Chris and I have actually built a relationship. Uh, he did give me a deal on the Cruise and Comfort. I am, I have always told every one of my viewers that I will be as transparent as possible. I could probably reach out to the other companies and I probably could have gotten a deal with them as well, but I am the type of person that likes to have the best of the best in this van. I went with the best heating system. I went with the best window covers that I truly liked. I went with a bunch of different things in here. I, the power system, right? The batteries, rely on batteries, which shout out to them. I'll be doing a giveaway on my Instagram. Uh, that was totally not intentional, but I am gonna be doing a giveaway on the rely on batteries. It's gonna be all through my Instagram page. So if you do wanna enter to that, uh, it's gonna be a giveaway for, I believe an RB100 battery, which is I think is a $1,300 battery. So I'm super excited about that. I'll be mentioning that again on my vlog and my live stream starting on the 27th and I'm ending it on the 
1st, so 27th of June to July 1st, 2019. Going back to, I went with the best. I did not want a roof mount AC unit and I wanted a 12 volt AC unit. As far as I know, as of right now, there's only really two really good 12 volt ACs on the market. Now, people are going to say, what about Fraser? I personally wouldn't put it in my van and it is a 12 volt air cooling system not air conditioning system. We can get into that in a completely separate video. Why is 12 volt important if you are putting it into a van? Well, if you are running a 12 volt power system, which 90% of us in vans do, then having a 12 volt AC takes a lot less power than a 120 volt or a wall mount AC unit. If you were to have a 120 volt, you would need to turn on your inverter, which draws power, and then it would draw even that much more power because it's on 120 volt than it is a 12 volt. I am not in a renewable energy engineer but i do know it takes less draw it doesn't take a genius to figure that one out i don't know the exact calculations i don't know any of that stuff so don't ask me any of that stuff if you want to know that kind of stuff i would recommend uh, reaching out to an electrical engineer a renewable uh, electrical engineer because they will be able to break it down for you hopefully in layman's terms because i can't even do it i can't i don't mess around with that stuff i can tell you what the amp draw on this thing was and we'll get into that i went with the cruise and comfort i wanted to be stealth i wanted to remain stealth so i kept it as an undermount which is great you don't see this big bulky thing on top of your roof so with that the fan condensers are underneath the unit itself is inside now the problem with this is um and this is probably the only con that i can think of with the cruise and comfort and a lot of people are going to say the con is the price well guess what it's an air conditioner in a van it's an off-grid air conditioner in a van if you go back to the beginning of the video where i had the clip i ran my air conditioner for an hour and it barely ate the batteries and i only have four 100 amp hour batteries I, I wasn't plugged in i wasn't even plugged in it was crazy right so the only major con i would say is the noise that it creates the, the condenser the fans underneath the van they're fans they spin and they produce air that's what happens they so there is a little bit of noise from there i can't hear it inside the van which is nice you, of course you can hear it but it's not as as it's not as loud as it is outside the van all right guys i am doing the ac part three video i am here with my boy jason right now from off grid solutions pdx why am i with jason one he's a very intelligent good looking guy but number two he has this toy that is a flare gun is that what it is sure is you're reading at 90 i hopefully we can see this Pretty on healthy. the screen once we get into the 92 shade, 93 be so it's not it's reading so look it come behind me and you can see we can see the windows of the van at this point so blue is going to be our sky what are we reading right there right there we're almost 90 degrees on the paint on the like paint 80, 80. and that's in the shade that's in the shade so if we go we can cruise to the other side if you want to just get a comparison. yeah we can why not what's that 97 97 98 so 100 then, yeah. 100 jeez so you can see it starts to get exponentially hot that is hot, 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 so. hot. hold on hold on <laughs> we're going inside right now granted we just had the floor up to max night it was we saw it actually over almost 100 degrees what this thing was reading close to the uh, heat register right so. i had it at the max so it actually we've had this sitting for about an hour now about an hour. uh with the ac cranking oh, i had it completely not plugged in it's completely not plugged <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah, and we had the batteries are like 98% when I started. Right. So we have not gone into this van. Gonna have to see what, where we're at. In in the last hour. So let's find out what we're doing here. Uh, you guys can hear the condenser on the outside. Do you want to hold that while I open the door? Okay. You should point it at the camera. What's it reading? 70s. Look, you can oh, even see the awesome. heat. You can see the heat coming through all the windows, yeah. Uh huh. From your window coverings. I really like to use this little flare, flare gun to see, Absolutely. you know, where we're getting our heat, where we're getting our insulation loss. So that thing is pumping out at 45 degrees. Yep, uh, around 45, 44, 45 degrees, steady. Wow. That is awesome. What's the temperature inside, Jay? 77 according to that thermostat which is the van life tech thermostat it's looking pretty good i don't know where your batteries landed but i'm curious to kind of know you want to know all right hour. we're going to turn the bright lights on so we can read the batteries jason's going to shut that door thank you 88 10 percent of batteries for an hour of ac is not a bad not a bad deal 87.9 uh is my batteries so it's running at 47 amps 
47.1 F. Oh, actually, it's it's actually less than that because I got these on. Oh yeah. I got the LEDs on, and these run at like 10 amps. So that's like a that's that's running just under 40 amps. That's awesome. Guys. Feels great. It feels great in here. How are you feeling here? I don't want to get out. <laughs> I gotta go back to work now. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it all over here. Well, and that's what you can even see with this. If you come back in here, you can see how much you're cooling even down the wall. Like you can see how much that path is just pumping all the way to the sink almost. It's it's cooling the wall. That is awesome. That's, that's reading at 67. Lot. Yeah. I mean. Oh, you can literally see you the can path. See, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can see <laughs> that the, the it's color actually, difference. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That is wild. And then you can see, look at, yep. just right there. So the where red it's is, in. that yellow and red, that's like a, um, just right around your window. That's curtain. like hot, I guess. Yep. Guys, this is why I'm friends with cool people like Jason, uh, because he's got cool toys, like this flare gun. It's a flare gun, yep. It's an infrared temp, you know, thermometer. You can point it at pretty much anything. And it's like, it reads down to, a, I believe, a tenth of degree. Really? This is another cool organ, organ made company. Oh, really? Player, Shout yeah. out to Oregon Made build. Company. Sure, I yeah. like that. Uh, Jason, thanks for letting me do that. Yeah, no uh, we're going to do more about this uh, in later on in this video. And uh, check out Jason at Off Grid Solutions PDX. Sweet. I got to get out and get back to work. He's getting back to work. He's uh, building a van. Thank you. Later. I mean, I just turned it on so I could cool down a little bit. It's no big deal, right? <laughs> that feels good. I'm not gonna lie, that feels good. It's getting chilly. All right, I'm gonna turn this off now. <laughs> so I can talk to you. All right, so uh, you can see that it has a little bit of noise there, right? So there's uh, there are controls that come with it, okay? It's no big deal. That you can buy it separately. It's a cruise and comfort little, you know, digital pad with push buttons or whatever. I did mine a little bit differently. I actually spliced in the wire to the Van Life Tech system. So I have all of my heating and controls all, all done through one touch pad, which is done through Van Life Tech. Obviously, if you don't have the Van Life Tech system, then you can't splice in the wire like I did. So what would you do? You get that little pad that actually I do need to keep, but I just, I don't need to keep it in my main cabin or my main living quarters. I just need to have it accessible to me so I can change settings on that. I don't really need to go into all of that, but that's pretty much how I did my system. One of the reasons why I did that as well, Wi-Fi capable. So I have wireless remote control access to my heating and my cooling at all times, as long as that is connected to Wi-Fi, which is like just an amazing feature. It's a luxury thing, I don't know. I already told Chris from Cruise and Comfort, I already told him that I was gonna be doing it that way and he was totally cool with it and totally on board with it. Now again, the normal way to do it, I don't wanna say normal, but the way to do it is to get that digital pad or the control pad. You would put that into your living quarters, you put it next to all of your other contraptions you have. I believe that's a thermostat as well. So it'll read that and then the uh, whatever you have your settings at, that will control you know, your air to start flowing. As you guys heard, this does pump out pretty pretty heavily. Now, if you were to have the, the pad with you, the, the digital pad, you can actually control the fans. It will give you different sensors of what it is. I have it in the back, so uh, I control it differently through that. That noise doesn't bother me. It's just like having, you know, a fan on or something along those lines. It stays cool in the, the room. I don't have a problem with that as long as it stays cool in this 60 square foot space, which it did really, really well in, as you guys saw. Probably the biggest question I have gotten uh, over the last I guess since I've started this is what is the drawer on the batteries? How much does it drain? Blah, 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 all that, right? All right, there are so many different things that come into play when answering that question, okay? It really depends on outside temperature. It depends on humidity, your, your inside temperature, obviously. It also depends on your insulation inside of your van. If it's well enough insulated, then it will keep that cool air inside. There are just so many different things that can really alter that that question. For example, the, when I shot that footage with Jason, like I, like you guys saw, it was about 90-ish outside the air temperature. Again, we were pointing that flare gun on the the van itself, and that obviously is going to be a little bit hotter than the air temperature itself. So it was right around high 80s, 90s. So it made the inside of the van a little bit hotter. However, we I also had my heat on that day. <laughs> I turned it on so I could get a picture. And then we turned on the AC. So I brought the heat up to the max, and then I turned the AC on to really test this thing out. When that happened, like I said, it took about an hour, maybe a little bit more an hour and 10 minutes hour and 15 minutes for it to go from a 90 degrees down to a 76 degrees i will say that again 
I ran the heat on full blast for an hour and then my well, heated floors pretty much. And I even have pictures of it that we had the flare gun. We're pointing it at the floor at 103 degrees. I then turned off the heated floors. I then turned on the air conditioning down to, I think I set it at 75. I let it sit for an hour. I came back. And then when we opened up the door, that is actually the first time we stepped into it in a little bit over an hour. When I left the van, it was about a 97 to 98 battery percentage. And we got back in, it was at, I think it was, I, I have to go back and look at the footage, but I want to say it was like a 87 point something, 88. So I lost about 10% of battery over an hour in change, I guess you could say. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, that is a lot of battery loss. Now, I have said I was off grid, right? I'm not plugged in whatsoever. And when I did read the amperage draw, I did have my signal lights on, which have a pretty big power draw because I have 120 feet of LED strip lights. It was at a 47 amps on the draw, I believe. Draw, draw, whatever. <laughs> my damn accent. What's nice about the cruising comfort, so it knew that it was getting close to the temperature. So the fan speed actually slowed down on the outside which created this to slow down just slightly enough to draw less amperage. The cruising comfort machine is smart enough to do that. And then when it cuts off, obviously it doesn't use any power at all. And bada bing, bada boom, you have your inside temperature nice and comfortable. Uh, I believe cruising comfort says that it will draw anywhere between 30 to 50 amps. Again, this all depends on weather and temperature and humidity. How I would probably run the air conditioner. This is actually kind of important because if I was off grid, right? If I wasn't plugged in, if I was running the AC at night or something and I wanted to sleep comfortable, I'd probably turn the, and, I've, and, and, and like, let's say I, I knew it was gonna be cloudy tomorrow or something like that, right? And I knew I wasn't gonna get a lot of sun on my panel or if I wasn't going for a long drive to charge my batteries. This all plays into kind of how to recharge your batteries, right? Because you don't wanna run your air conditioner all night and then all of a sudden you wake up and your, your batteries are dead, right? if it's a cloudy day the next day. How I would run this air conditioning unit or really any off-grid air conditioning unit, and I've taken this idea from like Mark from Nomadic or from Troy from Vinlife Tech, they kind of talk about this when they talk about having an off-grid AC unit in a van uh, or have more batteries, plain and simple. I would actually like driving to my destination, I would actually open up my curtain at the front and I would probably turn on my air conditioning from my van itself. The van itself air conditioning BTUs is much higher than a 12 volt air conditioning unit BTU, which I'll go into in a second. Cool the back area using my van AC to cool this area down. My insulation is good enough. I have window covers that are insulated as well. It'll cool, it'll keep this area cool back here. And then I would turn on my cruising comfort to just keep that edge off to sleep comfortably. I'd probably set it around 80 degrees and I would be able to have that on comfortably maybe even 75, and that would be able to cool me down to the point that I would be comfortable. If you have to add more batteries for more capacity, then do that. Like I said, I'm running this on 400 amp hours of lithium. If you are going to have a 12 volt AC and you want to run it off grid, I would highly, highly recommend having lithium batteries. If you use my discount code on the bottom, you actually get a deal off rely on, there it is. The BTUs can run between five and 7,000. Uh, 7,000 BTUs. I believe I have the, the higher model, so I know that I'm pushing close to 7,000 BTUs. Just for a comparison, the other 12 volt, the other 12 volts that I actually didn't even mention this beginning of the video, there's a zero breeze. Uh, the zero breeze pumps out about 2,000 BTUs. 2,000 BTUs in a 60 square foot space and, you know, uh, you know, six foot ceilings isn't going to work. It'll take the edge off, but barely. And you'd have to really confine that space to get a 2,000 BTU to really do decent this will cool this entire van no problem the other one is the king tech roughly about the same i think they might run a slightly higher btu at like 7500 but it's also a roof mount and uh from what i understand it's pretty freaking loud and it also vibrates the roof a little bit <laughs> and it takes away from the the your solar array think about that again one of the reasons why i wanted to go with cruising comfort if you were to get a non 12 volt like my brother has a Dometic Penguin, I believe, the Penguin 2 model, and I believe their BTU is 13,000, 13,500, something like that, right around that. So the BTUs is a lot bigger in a system like that, but he cannot run that off of his batteries. It would, it would drain them. It's gone. He has to be plugged into shore power to run that Penguin 2. He built his more of an RV. 
This is an off-grid four-season machine. I'm not saying anything bad about the other companies. I'm just trying to give as much information as possible and then you guys can do your own due diligence and you guys can figure out what you, works best for you. I just know that I went with the fancy pants cruising comfort, plain and simple. 7,000 BTU, give or take. Think about what that can cool down. It can cool down quite a bit. Again, there's also, there's also different models, by the way, but you can go onto their website and check all that out. Go on to cruisingcomfortusa.com, which I do know that Chris from Cruising Comfort would like me to say, this is built in America, actually built in America. It's built in the USA. Uh, it's made in the USA. I believe it's made in Arizona. So it's all made here in the US. I do know that he has went through a a lot of R&D to get that made here. Price, yes, it is roughly that 4,000 mark. I, I think it's worth it. I'm gonna say it on camera, I don't care. I think it's worth the price. You know, you'd have to pay a little bit more for the ducting or the electrical wiring. So it is going to run up in price. I do think you have to buy the, the digital, uh, you know, their digital readout. You have to buy that separately, which is like a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, whatever it is. So everything all added up, you're, you're dropping another couple extra hundred bucks, but you already dropped four grand on the AC unit to begin with. You know, the other ACs, the other roof mounts, they can, they're definitely up in the thousands. I'm gonna tell you that right now. And then you could go with that zero breeze, which I don't think is worth it. In my opinion, a lot of people are gonna argue me on that one but whatever again these are just my opinions all right guys so i'm gonna wrap this up now i think i've talked enough if you have questions please you can reach out to me if you want to or you can reach out on cruising comfort directly please go to the link below cruisingcomfortusa.com i haven't gone camping in it yet but we did that test with jason and i am now seeking out places to go camping with it we are going to test it way more in upcoming videos i hope to do a camping vlog before i sell the van and i'll be able to actually show it yeah like i'm, I'm excited ah, i'm excited all right guys i'll see you guys next time later